I want some of your brush. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. This is about to share a saying, I am your girl, Kayla. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe for more videos about black entertainment, black womenhood, and whatever else I feel like talking about this week. All right, let's get right in to it. So, it's been a cute little minute since I made a video, but like I told y'all, I have been working again. So I'm still trying to figure out my schedule with filming, editing, and like going to work and stuff like that. So please bear with me while we work those kinks out. But we're here and we have things to discuss. So I think I'm going to do what I did um, like a couple of weeks ago where I'm going to talk about a bunch of topics at one time. And everything in the subject matter is going to have to do with like music in some type of way because a lot of things are happening in terms of just stuff that have to do with either musical artists or topics surrounding music. So the first thing I want to talk about is Irv Gotti being a freaking weirdo. Okay, so for the past couple of weeks, Irv Gotti has been trending because he has been doing press tours for this documentary about um, Murder Inc. or whatever. And he's been talking about Ashanti specifically a lot. And the first time he talked about it, I was going to say something, but I was like, you know what? People have already said what they wanted to say. But now, obviously, just like a man, he got to keep talking. He got to keep talking. And it's just like, what the hell is wrong with this nigga? So Irv Gotti, in his documentary, is basically talking about, like, how he discovered Ashanti, what their relationship was like, whatever, whatever. And basically, while he's describing it, you the way the his tone of voice how he's speaking it's very much giving predator it's giving like he preyed on this young girl and he's like boasting about it now like you're in this documentary talking about your record label and like the success of the record label and you still find time at your big ass age like you <laughs> at your big age you were married when you were messing with the girl. You're still married now. If I'm under the impression he's still married or something like that. And you're still talking about this relationship like you're a teenage boy. Like, it's weird. And it's like he's sitting there talking about him, like I said, preying on her. And, like, gleefully telling the story about how he followed her to her house. It was feeling up on her and all these things. And then turning around talking about how... He wrote Foolish for his wife. Um, and, and I'm like, you have your your girlfriend sing a song that you wrote about your wife. And you're proud of that. And you're laughing. Like, it's funny. Like, I'm so freaking confused right now. And But, like, the whole thing with him and the fact that, like, I'm glad that a lot of people are not, like, laughing. Or, like, you know, a lot of people gave him flack, like I said, when he went viral a couple of weeks ago for talking about how he was upset that she dated Nelly or something like that. And it's just like, at the end of the day, you were like older than her. And you guys, your relationship has an unbalanced power dynamic. You are her boss. You are older than her. Like you have power um, that she did not have. And my thing is you preyed on her because you do that. And so many young girls, you know, think that they have to either date, sleep with, what have you, these record labels because these or these producers because they think that like, oh, these um, if I don't do that, then I'm not going to get that, my deal or whatever the case may be. And I'm not, that's what Ashanti did, but it definitely gives that to me. It gives that, like I said, she was a young girl just trying to get signed and here's this man and he's being flirtatious and trying to whatever and she's not gonna you know a lot of girls are just not gonna say no because they don't think they can say no and sometimes when girls do say no in those scenarios they get blackballed and be called difficult and they never you know they never get to become a star but it's really unfortunate that ashanti has to go through this right now that this man over 20 some years later is trying to rehash things and trying to make himself a victim when he's in fact a big fat loser and like i want it to go away i want this i don't even know why this documentary is happening at this point like i really sat there by the com camera crew out and listen man we're counting his like because all the clips i'm seeing is him just talking about cheating all the goddamn time like and the wife there too boo-hooing too like i'm like what is this 
What is happening? Like, this joke is ghetto. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Speaking of things that I'm tired of, this, I don't know this girl's name. Is it Krishan? Krishan? And Blueface situation? I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing it. Because I definitely think something bad is happening. I don't know what, but eventually something's going to come out really bad. And everybody's going to be like, we failed, Chris Shaw. Like, no, you guys are making fun of that girl and calling her all types of names. Instead of seeing that a lot of what she doing, she's doing seems like a cry for help. Like, I never understood that relationship at all. Like, I was just confused. I just knew that there was a girl with a missing tooth getting her all types of tattoos of blue face. And Blueface ain't had a, a hit since Tatiana. Like, what is happening right now? I don't know, but something about Blueface spirit nasty to me. Something about that nigga spirit is nasty. Like, any, any nigga that's gonna throw out his mama and his sister is never gonna have respect for women. Like, I just don't believe it. Your mama could be nasty as all hell. I just still don't believe that the way... I don't, And I don't think that that's the case with his mother. I just think he has a nasty spirit. Two girlfriends and then the girls fighting over him during quarantine. Blue face spirit nasty. Like, I just feel like some bad stuff gonna come out about that man in the years to come. And I'm gonna be like, I can't. I told y'all niggas. I told y'all niggas that like, he's not good and he can't even rap. So, like, what are we doing? Why are we talking about blue face in the year of our Lord and Savior 2022? Like, I just don't get it. But I'm really concerned for that girl. I just don't know why. Because I just think she she seemed to have so much going for her. She was very athletic. I think she was doing track. Like, she won some, like, um, competition. Like, a modern warrior or whatever. What is that thing called? Like, you know, is it called modern ninja warrior? You know, the, the obstacle course type thing? Like, some type of game like that. Like, and she did a good... She won the prize for that. So, she just seemed like she has so many... But I think she has a lot of trauma going on so i can see that that's maybe why she would gravitate towards this type of toxic relationship with Blueface. but like i don't know basies i don't know it's not looking good it's not looking good um but that's that on that i want you to stop covering it because at this point if you're not going it's like it's clear that she and him are not going to break up so if you're not going to offer any type of valid critiques and anything coming from a true place of concern, like, just drop it. Like, it's just not giving what it's supposed to give. Moving right along. The next thing I want to talk about is Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates is another one that needs to lock up immediately. He need to go. I don't believe in prison, but he need to go somewhere. He need to be put up somewhere. Somewhere. Because he's just weird. He another one who's spirit nasty to me. Something about Kevin Gates' spirit, my spirit and attack too well. You know what I'm saying? Like... Kevin Gates at the beginning, he was like amusing and I'm like, you know, he seemed like a family man with him and Drika and he just seemed like he he a little kinky, but like it, it was nothing too crazy that we've never seen before. But I don't know what it is within the past couple of the past year, it's just been getting uncomfortably weird. Like it's just like, okay, you like to have sex, sure, fine. Like he was one of the first niggas talking about he was eating the booty like groceries, right? Like that was his thing. But like I said, it, it was it was quirky back then. Now it's just weird because it seems that like every interview you have, you're never viral for music. You're always viral for the crazy sexual things that you've done, right? It's like you got viral for admitting to the world that you slept with your cousin despite knowing that that was your cousin. Like what? And now you're on every podcast, radio whatever interview talking about the nasty things that you do in bed and that you don't get tired even when he was on um carisha please which i know that most of the content of that show is like about relationships and sex and stuff but it's just like even though he's talking about sex and talking about oh if you sleep with another man i want you to videotape it and give it to me so we can watch it together and it's like you can even see young miami's face and she looked like uncomfortable because like i said he always just gotta take it to the next freaking level to the point where now you don't even feel good about talking about it anymore like his something about it is nasty now there's this clip going around about this song he got called i guess dick you down i guess is the name of the song and he he's like the way that he's like chanting the song and like acting out that he's sleep like he's like like He's sleeping with or having sex with this imaginary person on stage. And it's aggressive. He's slapping it. He's just thrusting. Like, I'm just like, ew. Like, oh, my Lord. Whoever has ever had sex with Kevin Gates, you are entitled to emotional and financial compensation. Like, what the hell is this man about? 
Then he had these tight pants on, butt hanging out. Like, I'm just like, I'm uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. Like, the fact that Orlando Brown is saying you're doing too much, that's how you know you're doing too much. And Orlando Brown is someone I want to have a conversation about so bad because I feel like he another one. Y'all need to stop having interviews with him. Like, that's a quick sidebar. Stop having interviews with Orlando Brown because at this point... Y'all not doing this because y'all genuinely care what Orlando Brown got going on. You're doing it for clicks, views, and engagement, and for spectacle. Like, if this man has a serious drug problem or a mental problem, you need to point him in the direction of getting him help and stop exploiting whatever he has going on. That's that on that. Like, I'm sick of it. Like, it's, it's getting to a point where it's just like, okay, the clips are not even funny anymore. Like, it's really concerning because this has been going on for years. And everybody just keeps inviting Orlando Brown on their platforms and for funniness. And it's like, no, this man clearly has an issue. And y'all need to, instead of exploiting him for this issue, you need to have get him some help. It's like too many times stars struggle with drug addiction or mental health issues. And it's not until they die when everybody's like, oh, we failed them. Like, no, y'all failed them because y'all kept egging it on and you kept instead of trying to get them legit help you just exploit their issues further like it doesn't make any sense brown saying that kevin gates hasn't like something is off for him like if he can see that that means we it's time to get back to the drawing board on kevin gates i'm tired of it i don't want to see him no more he another one when's the last time he had a hit why do we keep inviting him to things he don't got nothing going on. And then he had a nerd talking about he be practicing semen retention. Sir, you can't even have a conversation, especially with women, for 15 minutes without bringing about your sexual prowess. Like, and then we all knew last year when that little sex tape came out, it wasn't even hitting for real. So why are you talking? You're a liar. That nigga be lying just for the sake of lying. Because there was a TikTok trend about him talking about he fixes lady car just by touching the car or something. I'm like, nigga, why are you lying? Now, why are you lying? You're just lying for the sake of lying now, sir. Like, please leave. Get get the hell up out of here with that. Like I said, Kevin Gates, another one. My spirit in the tech too well. Like, I'm done. Done. I don't want to see it no more. I don't want to see it anymore. Next topic I want to talk about is Mr. Harry Styles real quick. So which magazine it was, um, I'll put what it is or the screenshot of what it was. But basically this magazine had Harry, T Harry Styles on the cover and called him like new king of pop or king of pop or something like that. And of course, people are raising eyebrows because when we think king of pop, we look no further than to look at Mr. Michael Joseph Jackson, okay? That is the king of pop. That's who he was. That's who he will always be. And no one's taking his place, period. Um, but I think that I don't necessarily think that this article was referencing him as like that. I think what they're saying is that Harry Styles is the dominant pop artist right now. Like, especially where, like, male pop artists are concerned, there's nobody seeing Harry in terms of chart success, in terms of album success, in terms of, um, I don't know, like, steady, you know, selling out tours, like, impacts both in America and abroad because he is from the UK. And so he has that, you know, success in Europe and the UK as well as America. So if we're talking about that that Harry Styles is probably the most popular pop artist right now, especially male pop artist. Cause I'm like female, I don't know. I feel like Ariana Grande is still pretty up there and Taylor Swift is also pretty high up there. Um, but I mean like right now, currently 2022, I, you can definitely say that like, that man got to choke on people, like, especially when his new album came out. So, and that's the thing, but I'm like, if we're saying that, then let's say that. But like, you can't say king of pop. Like, that's not a phrase you should use because people are going to automatically think Michael Jackson because that was his identifier for years. It's the same thing when you think, when you think um, The Voice, you think Whitney Houston, you know what I'm saying? When you think Godfather of Soul, you think James Brown, you know? So it's like you can't just say names like descriptors like that and don't think people are going to like be upset or annoyed about it. Because I think honestly in the past couple of months and even, yeah, the past couple of months and years, I think a lot of people love to downplay and try to discredit 
Michael Jackson's legacy. And it's like, obviously, Michael Jackson in his personal life has some complications there. And there are people who, you know, people are entitled to believe what they want to believe. Or you want to believe, you know, whatever about Michael Jackson's personal situation. You're entitled to believe so. And if you believe that, you know, the personal stuff is enough for you to want to divest from him as an artist and not listen to his music, you're, you're inclined to do so. But... At the same time, you cannot deny the talent that was Michael Jackson. Like, you just cannot. And the thing is, what people fail to realize is people love to compare Michael to a lot of modern day folks or people that have admitted and said that they are heavily inspired by him and then go as far as to say those folks are more talented and or better artists than he is. And my thing is, if, a certain, if Michael Jackson had to exist, for this artist to exist, that person cannot be better than Michael Jackson. Because if Michael Jackson didn't exist, they would not have a career. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, you can never, there could never be another Michael Jackson because the trajectory of Michael Jackson's career and what he did for pop music, what he did for the culture in general, can never be replicated. You know what I'm saying? There's never going to be another, you know, young, you know, He's never going to be a young artist who was in a group with his brothers that was so successful. Like, the Jackson's Fives was a very successful group. Like, the Five as a group was so impactful for what we had seen going forward with boy bands and with groups. Like, they were so influential in that. And so even just the Jackson Five alone, it's very hard to replicate. And even the way Michael Jackson was singing the frick down at 10, this man was out singing niggas in their 30s, 40s, 50s. This man was singing with pain. Come on now. Like, even that alone, you're comparing Michael and Michael out sing yo, that person <laughs> at age 10. That he could out sing him now and this man, like whoever, in their 20s, 30s. They, let, let's start there. And going beyond that, beyond the, the, the child stardom, as an adult, the records that this man broke, especially when you're thinking, especially um, um, between Thriller and, like, Bad, like, even those two eras, like, all within the same decade, like, the records broken with those out. It's just not going to be done. It's just not. And this man literally changed the landscape of how we see music videos. This man made short films. Like, I don't think people truly understand what music videos were prior to Thriller. I just don't think people understand. So that's what I'm saying. Like, yes, there have been artists that have built off of what Michael Jackson did, were able to achieve stardom and success. But if Michael Jackson did not lay that foundation down, that person couldn't build and expand off of that. So you cannot compare him to this one, that one, and the third. You just can't because it's just like I said, if Michael Jackson didn't exist and did not have the career that he had and he didn't lay that foundation down, where would they have to go off of? That's just my thing. Like You cannot tell me that you're telling me you're comparing the person that's so heavily inspired by, and if you know who I'm talking about, you know who I'm talking about. I'm not going to say his name. Okay. If you say this person is so inspired by this man, but you and you think he's better than Michael Jackson, but yet his greatest performance today is a tribute to Michael Jackson, it, it's just if Michael Jackson didn't exist, this person wouldn't have a greatest performance. And you can literally watch everything that this guy does, that all of it's heavily inspired by Michael Jackson. And it's always beyond the dancing because people love to compare the dancing. It's beyond that because one, if we're talking dancing, the man made it, the man popularized an entire dance move. But like that's only like a percentage. If we're talking performances, tours, records, like, you know what I'm saying? Music videos, album eras, like all of the things, style. All of these things, star power, all these things culminated together, nobody has it. And if we're going to have the conversation of anyone that would come close to that, the only person in conversation that I'm willing to have a conversation about is Beyonce Giselle Nose Carter. That is all. 
And even for me, as much as I love Beyonce, once again, there would be no Beyonce without a Michael Jackson. So one cannot be better than the other because it's just, it's not the same. But I'm tired of the disrespect. But I don't think, I don't necessarily think that that's what they meant about Harry. I just think that Harry's having a good run right now. He is. Because um, not even Mr. Justin is, is doing as well as Harry, I don't think. I think that Harry has a pulse on pop music right now. And he's having a good time doing it. Like I said before, I have no problems with Harry. I think he makes good music. He has a good vibe going about him. Um, yeah, I like the music. I like I like the vibes going. I like the, the performances. They're cute. The music videos are good. I have no problem with Harry, but we all know the best to ever do it. And that, that would just be that on that. Okay? I want to end this video talking about Diddy, child. Diddy had the gall, the audacity, the, the, the I don't know, the moxie. To tweet about R&B and essentially say the thing that people love to say because I believe they think that... At this point, I don't even think people believe this, but I think people are just saying it because they want to get people talking and get engagement. Like, at this point, there's no way. And Diddy essentially said the thing that people love to say, which is that R&B is dead and R&B is not the same as it was and da 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 da, -da. Now, uh, based on what people were saying, because he ended up... Obviously, when he made these tweets, people challenged him, especially... Um, a lot of the modern day R&B artists um, and you had to go as far as go on live and talk to some people I think Summer Walker was one of them um, and then based on what people were saying about what was said in the live he was basically trying to say that R&B is not commercially successful as it has been in like the 90s early 2000s and I'm just like okay and like R&B in my opinion does not need to be commercially successful like it doesn't like it's thriving and it's it's just, just how it is. I I think it's better that way. I think it's better when R and B is not pushed too far in the mainstream because I feel like when it is, it ends up getting watered down and it's not as great. Um, I think that yes, obviously, like that you cannot replicate what was the success of nineties R and two thousand R and B. But I think a lot of the reasons why nineties and two thousands R and B was as popular and mainstream as it was is because it was so heavily in um, close proximity with hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like when you think about all of the remixes being done where either a remix was done where an R&B artist was coming on to a hip hop song and singing the hook or a other way around or it's a pop song or R&B song and a rapper is coming to do a verse. So like that's probably why because hip hop is a pretty mainstream genre, especially for the 2000s and onward. Like hip hop next to pop music is probably the second most popular genre right now because a lot of white male children listen to hip-hop so it's like yeah that's why um but um you know and now like I said rap is having a moment and R&B is not and it has not had a moment but I'm like R&B has always been thriving there's never been a time where R&B has not thrived like I said thriving in the mainstream no but it's always like, see, even the time that period between like late 2000s early 2010s when like it felt like r&b wasn't doing as well as it was there was still amazing music being made like i said before y'all was just not paying attention like i said i'm like this is a time where jasmine sullivan came out and during this period jasmine sullivan made three amazing albums this is where miguel came from miguel had kaleidoscope dream and um his debut album i think it was just called miguel good album good times okay um, you have, like I said, Seven Streeter, Cassette Michelle, um, Jeremiah was the hook king at the time. Um, what else? You have, I'm trying to think, a bunch of things. I'm like, Frank Ocean introduced, like, alternative R&B. Same thing with Janelle Monet. Arc Android, one of the best alternative R&B albums ever. Um, and um, Electric Lady, amazing. Solange put out, before even a seat at the table, she had two good albums that she put out back then. Like, it's so many names that I can name you of good R&B that came out between the years of 2008 to like 2014. Um, like, it's not like R&B went anywhere, it just wasn't paid attention to. And now, like I said, the landscape of music itself is different. Like, 
You know, like you can literally make a song, put it on like TikTok, it becomes a popular sound and then you're completely blow up overnight. We've seen this happen a billion times um, over the course of especially like the past two, three years. Um, but even like when you think back to Musical.ly, the whole reason why Bryson Tiller's Don't Blew Up was because of Musical.ly. So that's what I'm saying. Like we're in a culture where like a person can blow up overnight that we never even knew about. So the way that we even engage with music is different. So that's the whole thing. Like things are just not going to be what it was in the 90s and the 2000s because it's just not there. And furthermore, it's like Diddy, you have the power to change that. You are, don't you still have like a record label situation going on? I'm like, even when um Dirty Money, what happened to that? Then it just disappeared. What happened to Day 26? Like, what happened to that? Like, what happened to Danny Kane? Like, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear from you, Diddy. Because you got other things to be worried about than the state of R&B right now. But it's like, you have the power to sign or discover a new artist. Like, a Diddy co-sign would do a lot for a new artist. So why don't you help them out instead of sitting there complaining on Twitter? Like the rest of us. Like, what? But I'm tired of the R&B is dead argument. Not with all this good music coming around. I'm telling you I'm going to do my, my, like, annual... I'm about to do a mid-year um, album um, phase because there's so much good music going. This past month, I done went to like four concerts and they've been eating. Okay, I'm gonna go see Give You On on the 30th and I know I'm gonna have me a good old time. That's what I'm saying. Like music is, R&B music is too good for y'all to be making that argument. Like it's tired, it's old, retire it. I'm done. I mean, I can name you 10 good artists off the top of my head right now, okay? And like I said, I've seen plenty of these artists live. They sound amazing. The vibes are immaculate. The music gives. They sound like they're in the studio. Like, and it's all different types of flavors. And like I said, in this month alone, you know, I saw Kalani, The Weeknd, and Blast. And like I said, I'm going to see Give Y'all. Now, The Weeknd is not R&B anymore. He's more so pop. But I mean... You know, even we between like Blast and Kalani, like those are two very different vibes, even though they're both like West Coast natives. But like, you know what I'm saying? Like Blast is like one of those artists that sound like a rapper, but, or he like blurs the line between rap and R&B and like Kalani is pretty much R&B. Um, and I just think both of them sound amazing live and like the shows were good. But like I said, I don't need to tell you this. Y'all know this. You know this. Like, Diddy knows this. I was like, you were sitting there talking to Summer Walker. Like, Summer Walker is one of the biggest R&B artists out right now. Like, what more do you want? I don't understand. Diddy, like I said, Diddy need to worry about fixing them folks' contracts and try not to get sued or something. I don't think you don't get sued at this point. But he need to worry about getting right with them people, okay? Like, because he screwed over a lot of folks. Like, if you have not watched Black Amenities TV, Black Amenities TV's, um video about like the breakdown of bad boy and like all the people he kind of screwed over over the course of like the um past several decades i urge you to watch that video because child it's a ride okay but like yeah diddy you have bigger fish to fry if you don't want if you don't like what you're seeing in r&b why don't you change it but then again i'm like i don't want you to screw none of my people over so maybe not Maybe not. Um, but yeah, that's all the topics I have for today, y'all. Y'all let me know what y'all think about all the things we talked about today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll definitely see y'all in my next video. Peace out, y'all.